How's it going everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode we're going to talk very very briefly about soft plastics in the pre-spawn slash spring time of the year. You know soft plastics in my op opinion are probably the most widely used fishing lure of all time. I think the uh, I think the curly tail worm, the motor oil colored or purple uh, curly tail worm was definitely one of the biggest fish catchers in history. And from anybody from the beginner angler to Kevin Stinkin Van Dam, uh, anybody can catch fish on a soft plastic. And in order to compete in tournaments uh, and just catch fish for fun, you have to understand how to fish soft plastics effectively uh, in a variety of scenarios. And so today I'm gonna talk about the pre-spawn and my top three favorite soft plastics and some of the ways that I rig and utilize those soft plastics to catch more fish. Now if you guys want to see a big fish catch, wait till the end of the video. I will have a, a nice fish catch for you guys to check out at the end. A nice fish I caught on. A combination of one of my favorite confidence lures and one of my favorite soft plastics for the pre-spawn, which we're going to talk about today. So let's jump into it. So the pre-spawn is a time of the year where you are switching seasons from winter to spring. So in Florida, the pre-spawn could be October through January. In Texas, pre-spawn is usually January through you know late February, sometimes into March. And, you know, as you work your way up the country, pre-spawn gets later and later. I think the pre-spawn in New York is is May, June, and sometimes July. So pre-spawn definitely varies depending on where you are in the country. But I'm gonna start with, you know, I'm gonna talk about three of my favorite soft plastics, and I'm gonna talk about the early pre-spawn all the way up till you know those fish are basically getting on beds maybe some of them already are on beds uh, I'm gonna go over the three lures that I use kind of to get ready for that little transition from fish being in deep water in the winter time to mating up shallow on the beds and the first one of those is going to be a strike king game hog this here is a I guess a, you know the zoom and they made the brush hog which is kind of the Kleenex brand name type lure but it is a soft plastic creature bait that for some reason just catches the snot out of them. It is, uh, in my opinion, the best creature bait for Texas rigs, Carolina rigs, any other bottom contact type rig, slither rig, split shot rig. There's so many different ways to rig these things, but I've just found that this lure right here, the Strike King Game Hog, in I think it's the normal size. Yeah, the four inch size. I think they make it in a five inch, maybe even a six and a half. It is just an incredibly versatile lure that can catch fish in so many different scenarios. But I wanna talk about the one that I use this on the most in the pre-spawn, and that is a Carolina rig. So if you guys are familiar with a Carolina rig, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, let me explain. Uh, a Carolina rig is a way to rig your bait where the weight is several feet up the line and it is pegged there by either a swivel or I use a thing called the Carolina Keeper. And then the, the bait will swing weightless on the line behind the weight by at least, you know, at least two feet. None of my Carolina rig weights are ever, uh, you know, less than two feet above the, the worm and or the soft plastic, in this case, the game hog. And I've just found that this thing has the perfect amount of appendages, isn't too flashy, uh, but also it's, it's not too subtle. I think in the pre-spawn when you're dragging a Carolina rig, you know, across a ridge, um, down, a, down a creek channel, in a ditch, I think this is definitely one of the most versatile lures for that. And as you move closer to the spawn, this thing on a Texas rig with a red bead, I just love, especially when those fish get near beds, there is nothing better than dragging this around a shallow flat, shallow little gravelly flat those fish are spawning on, and uh, you guys can catch some big bass doing that. So my two favorite colors, I'm from Texas, so your you know colors, your water clarity might be different, but I like to throw California craw, uh, green pumpkin, or green pumpkin sapphire. Those are my three favorite colors that I throw. I keep it simple. You guys will see throughout this video, I keep my soft plastic colors very simple because I don't think fish can really tell. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm uh, not giving the fish enough credit. Maybe they're smarter than I think they are, but their brain is like this big. So I'm going to guess not. So I keep it pretty simple. If it's bait fish, it's going to be white. If it's bluegill or crappie, it's going to be a red green pumpkin mixture. Now the second soft plastic we're going to talk about is one that might come at you guys a little bit of a curveball, and that is actually going to be a soft plastic paddle tail swim bait. So I could make a whole different video on you know swim baiting in the pre-spawn and, and the ways that I do that, but I'm including this in the top three pre-spawn soft plastics video because I believe at the Strike King Rage Swimmer is one of the most versatile lures to use in the pre-spawn, no matter how you rig it. And my top three ways that I rig this are going to be, uh, you know, of course, the, the size is depending on what you know rig I'm going to use. But I love throwing it by itself 
on a jig head. So depending on how deep I am, how fast I want to reel it, usually a quarter ounce, eighth ounce jig head. That is a great way to rig the 3.25 inch version. The second way that I love to use a soft plastic swim bait in the pre-spawn is going to be on a flashy swimmer. Now I talked about that in my top three reaction bait videos. So I love linking my videos together. So if you guys have missed that video, click down here. Uh, but a flashy swimmer is a great way uh, to catch fish in the pre-spawn, especially when they start moving up shallow. And when those fish are shallow and they are ready to feed and very aggressive, throwing this on the back of a bladed jig like a Strike King Thunder Cricket uh, is just an incredible way to catch some big bass. Spoiler alert, I catch one on it at the end of the video. So stay and check it out. And so that is going to be soft plastic number two. Uh, as I mentioned, jig head, flashy swimmer, uh, chatterbait trailer. Of course, you can throw it on a swim jig. I know a swim jig bite can be really good in the pre-spawn, but it is just such a versatile lure, uh, such a versatile soft plastic. And the third soft plastic, and by far my favorite, uh, of course, it can be used on a Carolina rig, can be used on a Texas rig, can be used weightless. Uh, very similar to the soft plastic creature bait, except I don't know why, but this thing excels when those bass are getting ready to spawn or are on their beds. This is, you know, a lure that you can use all year round. You guys know I love this thing, and that is the Strike King Ocho. And especially in the pre-spawn, I'm going to be using the six inch version. I just find the six inch gets bigger bites, and really, the pre-spawn is the only time of the year when your big female bass will get shallow. I don't care if it's for one day, maybe they're up for a week. Uh, you know, they're the big, big giant bass that dominate your lakes. They're usually not any shallower than, you know, 10 or 12 feet and they only come up for a few days to spawn. But I found that this bait right here is the best way to catch giant bass during the springtime months. Uh, I just put it weightless. You know, the six inch version has enough weight to it, enough salt that it sinks fast enough for me. Um, I'm rarely ever, you know, punching this thing through grass holes. If I was, I would put a little bit of a weight on it. But just standard four, you know, three, four, five aught Texas rig hook into this thing is an incredible way to catch some big pre-spawn bass. And if you guys want to see one of my favorite videos of all time, fishing on Sam Raver with Garrison in the college fishing tournament that him and I got ninth place at, I caught the kicker bass at the very end of the day on this thing. So if you guys haven't seen that, I would really highly suggest it. It's an awesome video. And I go over a little bit why I decided to throw this in the sticks uh, in the shallow grass that we were fishing. So that was nice and short and sweet. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and learned something. All this stuff will be linked below. But as I mentioned, it is time to show you guys a nice big old fish catch. We went out here hoping to film a big fish video and uh, it didn't work out. The fish were a little bit finicky, but we were able to catch uh, one big one. And then I also dumped a big one right at the boat. So we'll see you guys on the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. If you guys are not subscribers, hit that subscribe button so you guys never miss another video. And uh, have fun watching this fish catch. There's one. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh my goodness. Big in, big in, big in. Yep. Um, now we're gonna boat flip them. Oh, good one. Good one. Good, good, good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll take it. I'll take that one. Get in here, buddy. Come on. No, I left too much line out. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. There we go, baby. First big fish of the day on the Thunder Cricket. What's that, four, you think? Yeah. yeah that's, that's, a, that's a solid. thick fish. Now, right there is one, what you want to see in the pre-spawn. You want to see him just going on the chew. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the, the proportions of these fish. Ah, first big one of the day. Woo! Give me some of that. Give me some of that. Let's go. What was that? I'll take it. What? What was that on? The, 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 the what's it called? Thunder Cricket. Thunder Pants. There's one. Yep. Oh, what a bite. What a bite, biggin. Another biggin. Another biggin. Another biggin. Holy cow, dude. Holy cow. I don't think it's I don't think it's like eight, but it's oh. <laughs> Dang it!